Hey everybody, this video is the second in a series on how to use CSV spreadsheet files to update the text in Motion Graphics in Unreal Engine's Motion Design Toolset. So this video is intended to be a bit of a high-speed technical overview. It's going to be particularly useful to anyone who's already familiar with CSV files in general, data tables in Unreal, blueprints and the such. So I'm not going to go into intricate detail of every single step in this video. That's going to come in a later video that if it's not out now, it's going to be out within a couple of days. But for now, this is going to be a technical overview, ripping through all the different steps involved. And so that if anyone who's already familiar with the technicalities of making blueprints and automation and Unreal Engine can get started with this right away. So of course, if we're going to be bringing in CSV file data, we're going to need CSV files. So I have two right here that I've created in Excel, list a.csv and list b.csv. And their structure is important in that the first column should be individual names per row. So in this case, I'm using LT123456. So that's uh, representing lower thirds, 123456. Uh, column first row is just uh, three dashes and so this is considered the row name this has to be present for any data table that you're going to import into unreal engine now of course you don't have to use the values lt123456 you can use any values you like uh, they should be text files uh, or text values because in unreal the row names will be a name structure so um, it could be a mix of letters and characters so that is the row names. The second column is the column that actually contains data that we're ultimately going to be displaying. So in this case, you can give it your own column name. In my case, I'm calling it LT text for lower thirds text. And then we have our values in each row. In this case, list A has list A text one, text two, text three, etc. And my list B CSV file has these uh, row data containing list B, title one, title two. So we can have a couple different variations here between the two lists. List A has text values. List B has title values. Uh, of course, all of these are just strings. And the important thing is that both of these lists, these CSV files, use the same row names so that I know that I can uh, use those in my automation. And they also have the same column name for the data content itself, LT text. In fact, we're going to need that later on. So I'm just going to select that, control C, copy that. So if we're going to import this into Unreal Engine, we first need to tell Unreal what structure of data to expect to put into a data table. So here in my content browser, I can create a data structure by right clicking and choosing blueprint and then going down to the bottom of the submenu and choosing structure. So that creates a new structure. I'll call it demo CSV struct and control S to save it, double click to open it. Okay, the only thing that we need in here is to list any data containing columns. So if we look back at our CSV structure, we do not need a row here at all in our structure for the uh, row names. That's gonna be assumed it's expected to be part of any data table. So the only thing we need to put in here is a uh, value for our LT text. And so I'll just double click here and control B paste. And if I wanted to, I could put in a tooltip and those sorts of things. And so I can save that. If I wanted to add more columns, I could just hit this add variable and we'd get more. I'm going to uh, delete this one. So click and delete. Here it is, trash can. Okay. So the only other thing here is that we've got the name of this uh, variable column defined. We need to define the structure to be a string in this case. So I'm going to click here and choose string. And that way we have a storage for text. Okay. Saving that structure. We're good to go. Now we're ready to import that data table. So I can right click in my contact browser, choose import into the game, etc., And I can select the list a.csv file. And when I open this, it's going to ask me what I should import it as. In this case, I want to choose data table. I definitely want that. And I want to choose the data table row type that corresponds to this demo CSV structure that I just created. So I'll click on this drop down. I'll type in CSV. And now this uh, lower third CSV structure, I created that earlier for the intro overview. And here's the demo CSV structure that I created just now. 
and I can, if I want to, ex, uh, you know, ignore extra fields, ignore missing fields, and we can just go ahead and apply. And now we've got list A imported into our project. So control S to save it, double click to open it. And sure enough, there is our list A values and we've got our row names and we've got our LT text values. And so that's it. Now I'm going to be importing different lists at different times. So I don't want to leave this named list A. So with that selected, I'll hit F2 and just call this demo CSV data table. All right. So that makes sense. Control S, save it. And now anytime I want to load a new set of data, I could just right click on that, choose re-import with new file. And now I can choose list B. And when I open that, this all updates to the list B values. Again, if I want to go back to list A, I can re-import with new file and choose the list A file. And there we go. There's our new values for list A. All right, control S, we're all saved. And that takes care of getting the data itself into Unreal Engine. So the next thing we should probably think about is where are we going to put these values? And in this case, I have a level set up that is a lower third that contains text. And that text is what we're going to update with the data that's in the table. Now, in a previous video, I showed how to create a lower thirds like this. And so if I double click on this level to open it up, I'll get uh, the results of that tutorial. So of course, I will link to that previous tutorial in the description and in the playback of the YouTube player. You should have a card that appears for a little bit that you, if you want to uh, click and, and learn how to create this then there's a full tutorial on that. But basically for the purposes of this, I've already got this in existence. It's got transition logic set up. So if I click on here, we've got transition logic. I uh, hit compile on that. It's set up as a lower thirds bar and all of that sort of thing. Again, if any of that is new to you, you should uh, go back to that previous tutorial and check that out. The main thing is that we also have uh, two sequences set up, one for bringing that in to our view, right? So that's going to pop in. And if that's played backwards, that will be how we transition out. And then we also have a change animation here where if we're going to fade out and fade in a new value, we just hit play and that fades out and fades in. So all of that already exists in this structure. And the other thing that we have already is a remote control values. The remote control is set up right now to have control of the text that's showing in this lower thirds and the colors. Now, for this demo, I don't want these remote controls. So we're going to uh, do something entirely different. So I'm just going to go ahead and select all of these individual controllers and hit delete and delete each one of these and delete. And that takes care of those. And then I'm also going to delete the exposed properties and we'll start this from scratch for the purposes of this video. So this is the remote control settings for this level and we have a blank slate to work with here. Okay, so I'm just gonna do a save all on everything. And next we're going to need some way of reading in our data off of the table structure, not, not import it from the file, but we've already got the data on the data table structure. We just need to look it up, get the piece of information that we want and put it into the lower third text. And for that, I'm using a actor blueprint, and that allows me to put some workflow logic into an actor that I can put into the level, and then I can trigger that workflow as a custom event. So to create a blueprint actor, I just right click in content, go to the blueprint class option. When I click on that, I have an option of a variety of classes to use as a template, and I'm going to use the actor template for this. So I'll call this demo CSV and uh, underscore BP, enter, and we're good with that. Control S to save it. Okay, so because this is our rapid fire tech overview rather than the step-by-step -step guide, instead of going through all the steps of building this out, I'm just gonna use a version that I've already created earlier and just talk through how it works. So I'm gonna take the previously created CSV automation blueprint, drag that out into my level, and show that we have a custom event update LT text created. It's triggered from here, so it is available in editor. And then we have a row name variable, an LT text actor variable, a column name, and a data source. So these variables are allowing us to define essentially what row name are we going to want? 
what text actor are we going to update, what column name should we expect in our data table, and what data table are we using. So I can populate these variables, and so in this case I've got my uh, the demo CSV data table, right, so I double click, that's that list A that we imported earlier. I could put that into the data source, the column name that we want, of course that is LT text, based on what we saw in our CSV files, right, so I can go here and check our CSV file, and there's LT text right there. And finally, we have the text actor that we want to update. It's going to be this LT text actor. I can click this drop down and get a little outliner and choose that. And finally, the row name we want, I'm just going to choose LT1 uh, because I know that row exists. All right, let's do a save all on everything right now. And double click on the actor in our content browser to take a look at how the blueprint puts these different variables to use. So double clicking here. Basically, what I've done is uh, created an area here called Update Lower Thirds Text. And what's happening here is we have a custom event that is available for call an editor, update LT text. Here it is, LT text to update LT text as a button. And so what we do is we take the uh, text actor that is picked right here and we cast that into an Ava text actor. So if that cast fails, we just kick out a print string. If it was successful, we're going to go into our uh, procedure further and we want to uh, get our data table row names from the data table. Of course, that data table is this variable, the source, and uh, the row name, that's our variable, the row name, and we find what we're looking for. If that is uh, greater than or equal to zero, then we're in good shape, so we have a branch. And uh, if it's true, we're going to continue to get our column as a string. And here is the column name, which of course is a variable here. And the data source, again, is our table. So we get our array of various uh, LT text values from that table. And assuming that worked, right, we double check that uh, that indeed is greater than zero. And we branch. If that's false, we're going to uh, set our text to be bad column ID. Again, here, if our um, finding of any rows at all in our uh, data table, if that was uh, not greater than or equal to zero, we set our text to be uh, the text of bad row ID. And what are we setting this text on? Well, earlier here, I made sure that we got a valid uh, LT text actor or AVA motion design text. So we just get the text 3D component. Right? If I select this actor, we see that there is a text 3D component. And in that text 3D component, there is the ability to set the text. So if I pull off of this and I say set text, and sure enough, there is uh, the set text. So that should let us then update the text that is in that actor. And so this blueprint then becomes usable in a variety of different levels because we can just put in whatever text actor we want to update from whatever table and whatever row name and column name. And so this is very, very reusable. And of course, we can run that in editor. So I'll compile it and close this. Let me just set this aside for a moment. So here is this new level I created earlier in this demo. demo. And if I select this actor, then we have the button for updating. Again, what we're going to do here is read LT1 row value out for the LT text column and assign whatever text is in there to this actor. So if I run this, sure enough, list A, text one. So our custom event is working, but now we need to be able to trigger that in our transition logic sequences so that this text will automatically get updated when transition logic is running. So to do that, we're going to add the actor here to our sequencer for our in transition as well as our change. So if I go to the very beginning of this, I can uh, collapse the actors that are already there, and I want to select this actor and add it to my sequence. So add actor to track, and here's my CSV automation blueprint. Now that's in there, I'm gonna add a event track to trigger an event. So hitting the plus button, choosing event and trigger, that creates the track, and I'm just gonna advance one frame, and then hit the plus button here to add a key. Now that creates a trigger, but it's not attached to anything. So let's attach it to our update LT text by right clicking, properties, go to this unbound and we want to bind it. So quick bind, here is our blueprint actor and we go into the class 
and expand the blueprint further. And there's our update LT text. So this is the custom event we're binding to. And so we actually ended up creating a little bind between this little tick mark and the update event itself. So uh, we can close this that opened up automatically. And finally, we do want this to operate in editor. So we want to right click, go to properties and choose call in editor. That way when this sequence runs, then that will call in editor. So let's do this to the change sequence as well. So I'll go to the change sequence. Now, instead of at the beginning, we want this to happen during the fade up. So right now, the first half where we start here and we go to the marker A, that fades out what we have. And so one frame later is where I am going to trigger my update of the text. So we'll go ahead and select our actor, add actor to track, there we are, add an event trigger. And right here on this frame, we'll add a trigger and right click in properties. And we wanna bind this quick bind to our blueprint class blueprint and there's our event and so we are all set so now anytime our playhead crosses one of these triggers it's going to run the event and it'll check the variables and uh, update the text appropriately of course we do want this to run in editor so right click properties and call in editor great we will save our sequences and let's do a uh, control shift s to save all so now uh, we're ready to put this level into some transition logic and put it to use oh one more thing uh, we want to be able to update this row name whenever we have an individual page in our rundown so that we can have a different title or a different row from the spreadsheet being pulled in by each page so let's bring up our remote control and that gives us our remote control exposure tools. And we'll go to row name here and click the button to expose that to remote control. And then I'm gonna click and drag that property over to controllers. So now we have a controller that is referencing this variable. This is what we'll see in rundown and we'll be able to update this for each page that we create. All right, I think we are ready to put this into rundown, save all, save selected. Let's close our remote control and right click and we'll create a new rundown playlist in the content browser. We right click and go to motion design and motion design rundown. And I'll call this demo playlist, control S and double click to open it up. There you are. And here we will click and drag our uh, demo level that we've been working on. So drag that into our templates and there it is. And then I'll drag it in to make our first page. And sure enough, there is our row name that's been exposed as a remote control controller. And LT1 is our default. And I'll just do control D, control D, control D. Now we have four different pages. Each one of these will get a different value for the row name. So LT2, let's go ahead and skip over three and jump to four. And we'll skip over five and jump to six. And that way we'll know that uh, the various values in here are working. So fingers crossed, I set up everything correctly. Preview in, and we get our list A text one. Let's preview next, we should get two, awesome. Preview next, we should get four. And finally, uh, preview next, and we should get, uh, oh, we left it at one. So let's uh, set this to six and enter. And uh, let's preview that in, and there we go. Okay, great, that's working. And then we can just test updating our table so let me start back here at the first page and preview that in and there's our text one list a but if i right click on my demo table re-import with a new file and choose list b open that well now i should have the b values in here so if i preview next i should get list b title two and preview next list b title four and title six so there we go that is the whole technical setup done very very quickly and um hope Hopefully this helps. We'll have one more video coming out. If it's not out right now, it'll be in a couple of days. It'll be a detailed step-by-step -step walkthrough of building out the blueprint and uh, setting this up so it works from scratch. And if any of this was something that you didn't recognize or you're not familiar with, that step-by-step -step video should help. So I hope this is helpful. And until next time, have fun.